What is going on, FG fam, and welcome to another episode of the Miami Marlins franchise here on MLB The Show 21 on Next Gen Consoles, and we are moving on through the season. We are already through April and into May. Like I said, we were going to get quickly through seasons. I don't know. We might even ramp it up after this season, depending on how the season goes, but... We have an early season opportunity here. Ryan Muller trying to close out the Atlanta Braves. Gets the strikeout right there. And now with two away in the bottom of the ninth, it's Acuna Jr. with a last chance, and he will strike out on the curveball away. And the Marlins come away with a one-zip victory in Atlanta. That is a tight one for sure. Nicholas Boucher, player of the game and the winning pitcher with seven shutout innings. Riley Green gets hurt, and in our Triple-A Jumbo Shrimp, he's going to be out for a little bit, but we continue moving on through this Brave series. J.J. Blade pulled a little something, and Charlie Aiken sustaining injuries, so uh, outfielders aplenty getting injured in this episode already to start off with. Going into a series against the Washington Nationals, we lost opening day to Washington, so... We'd like to get a little revenge if we can. They're under 500 now by a game, and we have gotten ourselves to 19 and 12. We look to continue to play well, and Juan Soto looks to continue embarrassing his old team as he brings home the tying run in the bottom of the ninth inning with a no-out double. So that's his eighth double of the season. Nice RBI double, and then a strikeout from Bobby Bradley thrown on to first to confirm the out we would go into extra innings in that extra inning frame here in the top of the tent there's an out stepping on the first base bag but they've got a runner 90 feet away that could give them the lead barely tapped over to the pitcher we take the easy out and give up the leading run two to one washington now with that two to one lead there's a base hit into right field that puts another guy on the bags with two away. Here's a chance, and the slider down low gets Smith to strike out for Washington. Michael McHugh gets through it, and there's Charlie Aiken swinging away, and then the throw to third to get an advancing runner is going to end it and give Washington the win here in Miami at South Beach Park. Washington comes in, gets the dub, even though Juan Soto played pretty well against them, got that RBI double. He was only one for four on the day, though. Five hits for us, seven for them. We had an error in the field. So that breaks a win streak we had going of five games, and we get another opportunity here against Washington in the bottom of the 10th. And let's see how this one goes, because Juan Soto back at the plate again with Glaber Torres on first base, an opportunity to walk this thing off, but instead a very hard hit ball over to the second baseman. Soto beats it out, and if Soto beats it out, you know, it took you a while to get it over there to first base, because he's not the quickest. Now look at this, getting the bases loaded. Big opportunity for Javi Baez, and, and look what he does. Look, look what he does with the bases loaded, flying out behind the pitcher, popping out behind, behind the catcher. Yes, popping out behind the catcher as the Washington Nationals come away with another victory at South Beach Park, just absolutely dominating in this series, just winning all these close games. Juan Soto plays very well again, might be worthy, gets a double and a run scored, and Gleyber Torres played pretty well as well. So, going into the last game, we really do not want to get swept by Washington. We end up getting the win, so that's good. Avoiding a sweep is always a good thing. Against Baltimore, we got a rubber game that's tied at seven apiece. I'm not playing two innings, though. So, Marlins get the win 10-8 to eight as the CPU. Very generous to give us that win right there. Now we move into a series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. We come back to beat them 4-3. to three. And then in the next game, they're up 4-0. They're going to get a 5-3 win. They hold on for dear life in that one. Kurt Blanks gets hurt along the way, but we do get two out of three against Pittsburgh. Going into the series against Philadelphia, we got an opportunity to come away with a sweep here. And it's a very tight game. It is a 6-5 ball game in the bottom of the seventh. Do I really want to play that many innings? No. 
So we have a little faith in the Sim, and the Marlins do get a 6-5 to five win. So there we go. We sweep Philadelphia, putting together a four-game win streak at this point. Jerry Aponte is going to be out over six months. Sorry, I know that is a user prospect, so uh, prayers in the chat for Jerry. Then we have a 3-3 game in the bottom of the ninth against the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, they are five games under 500. We're 28 and 16 to this point. Opportunity for a walk-off, but that's just a fly out to center field. So two away, got the runner on second. Still an opportunity to get the walk-off. It's Charlie Aiken, and he will strike out. Thrown on to first, confirms the out. And we're going to extra innings against the Cardinals. We can't ever seem to get these things done in the ninth inning. Here comes Randy Dobnak. 357 so far this season with a 179 against righties and a 278 against lefties. So good thing he's not facing a lefty here. Throw on to thirds, not in time at all. So they get a stolen base. Lane Thomas is just going to... Try to fan at that one. He tried to hold up. It just didn't work out. Look at this. A popped bunt that nobody can get to. So the leading runner comes home, and now Tommy Edmond at the plate will strike out on the high heater. But, man, that is not the way you want to see a run come across the plate. Dobnak pitch way better than that. Henry Silva coming in for the Cardinals. Try to close this one down. He has to face Mike Trout, and Mike Trout says, not today, Junior. That thing is out of here. Left field, Mike Trout says, get the hell out of my stadium. 12th homer of the season, a two-run shot for the W, and everybody waiting at home plate to congratulate the best player in all of baseball, Mike Trout who really wants a ring this year. He said at the beginning of the season, it's ring or bust for the Marlins this year, and I would tend to agree with that. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. We got to win this damn thing this year, and that is a good step forward. Mike Trout with a clutch two-run shot in extras to get the dub in the bottom of the 10th. Jared Trout went two for five with two doubles and a ribby himself and we extend that win streak out look at the win streak going it ends in the first game in the bronx and now we have our full game for the episode here at yankee stadium in the bronx new york the 28 and 21 yankees playing host to us we have 31 wins on the season and we're facing ryan yarbrough but jared trout look at this starting the game off well with a base hit into left nice job getting that one to fall here's javi baez he will hit one out to left and that will fall as well yankees don't have the best fielders in the world so works for me here's juan soto driving one deep out to right diving attempt fails and we got a little problem on the base pads as they're gonna get a runner at the plate, Jared Trout not able to get in there and provide the first run of the game. So it's Glaber Torres now, the former Yankee, who lines one right at second base, so no runners come home. And Nicholas Boucher is our starting pitcher. 5-3, and three, 309 ERA, 110 whip. Not a bad start to the season for him, but he'll give up a leadoff base hit as well. So every pitcher giving up a leadoff base hit thus far. And there's a big strikeout of DJ LeMahieu to start off the outs. Here's Michael Conforto, the former Marlin, who strikes out looking. And he goes down as the second strikeout for Boucher. Giancarlo Stanton make it three strikeouts. All outs by way of strikeout for Boucher. Not a bad first inning. Here's Luke Voigt in the bottom of the second. And Voigt gone baby that is out of here no doubter to left center field and Boucher not able to get the strike out of Luke Voigt would have been great to see but it's a home run and a one nothing Yankee lead here's Javi Baez he comes up and he gets a single to start off the top of the fourth inning good to get your leadoff runner on later he's on second as Glaber Torres strikes out not having a lot of success against his former squad, but Bobby Bradley comes up and no problem. It's a Bobby Bradley bomb here at Yankee Stadium. His sixth of the season, 440 feet for Mr. Bradley to give the Marlins the 2-1 lead. Here's one down the third baseline, starting a double play to end the fifth inning. 
And Michael King will come in in relief for the Yankees. He does not have the greatest of ERAs. And he has a little bit of struggles against the left-handed batting. Here's a big hit out to center field, and it will just get over the wall. Mike Trout is having a hell of an episode today. His 14th home run of the season extends this Marlin lead, and the Yankees will bring in Carson Fulmer. They realize they made a bad bullpen decision there, and there's a walk on the cutter way outside the zone for Torkelson. That'll bring up Trout. The top of the order, and Jared Trout going to strike out for the first out of the inning. We had bases loaded. Here's Mike Trout with bases loaded. He strikes out on a high heater. Carson Fulmer might get out of a bases loaded situation, and he does as Javi Baez strikes out as well. And look at the tag to get out of that seven. That was dangerous for the Yankees. In comes Andres Del Villar, who is not having a very good start to the season at all. His average against both sides of the plate is over 300 right now, and Wander Franco's taking advantage. I wonder if that thing's out of the park. Well, it is. Eight home runs on the year for Wander Franco. 435 feet on that particular one to straightaway center. Up comes Akil Babu. And that one is gone as well to the short porch in right field. That one barely got over the wall. But a 341-footer is good enough for Badu's fifth home run of the season. Here comes Randy Dobnak in again. A 338 ERA, his second appearance of the episode. 17th appearance of the season. He gets a ground ball to second base. Glaber with the tag, and the seventh is done. But we're tied at three at Yankee Stadium. Here's Michael Conforto in the bottom of the eighth after we do absolutely nothing at the plate. There's a nice double play, though. That might help us get out of this eighth inning. Stan just sits there and looks at a fastball up and in. And we're through eight. To the ninth we go in the Bronx. This is huge, might be worthy. Takes a walk with two away. Can we get something started here in the top of the ninth? Luis Sessa coming in, they've seen enough. They don't like walks. Sessa's been pitching well this year. There's a grounder over to short and they make the play. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. Yankees might have an opportunity to walk it off. Wander Franco, that should not have been a walk. Here's Luke Voigt, and he hits a grounder up the middle. So two on, nobody out for the Yankees. Attempting to take an extra bag, and they do. So it's runners on the corners. We've had enough of Dobnak. In comes Taylor Rogers, yet to allow a hit to a right-handed batter this year. But he's facing a lefty, and that is a single that will turn into a double into the gap, and the Yankees will secure a walk-off victory here against the Miami Marlins. We had them, and we choked it away here in the Bronx, New York. So Yankees with a big dub for them. Akil Badu, player of the game, who's three for four with a two-run shot. That was a big one. And there you go. The Yankees end up with the victory. So Domingo Robles sustains an injury for AA Blue Wahoos. He's going to be out for a few days. Benito Nivar as well. So we got a two-game losing streak to contend with, and we go to Philadelphia trying to continue a little run we have going in the ninth inning. We were down by four runs. Three already scored in the ninth. Can we get the walk off? This one off the end of the bat in left and that is not going to get it done. And the Phillies end up winning at Citizens Bank Park in the ninth inning. So there you go, a 7-6 win. Bryce Harper was the player of the game. He had two bombs in that one. Vince Velasquez, the winning pitcher. Quinn Priester saddled with the loss. So a three-game losing streak for our Marlins after doing so well most of this uh, month. We get a 1-0 win against Philadelphia there. And we are into the month of June, which is the month of the draft. That is huge. We will see where all of your created guys have gone. If you did not create a guy in the uh, community post, you're probably not going to have it. If you can created them too late you're probably not going to have it because i recorded this episode like a couple of weeks ago to be honest with you 
So we'll see. This is the current stats for how our guys are doing on to the AAA side of things, which I'm really interested to see because a lot of your user guys are in AAA and AA in this particular club. We have somehow finessed a lot of clubs to get a lot of your players here, so I really am interested to see how they do. Joe Hagen's pitching really, really well in AAA. I know a lot of people are down on Ryan Muller this year, as I can tell from the comments section, because of the saves he has been blowing. I'm giving him a little bit more of a chance, but I don't know, maybe Joe Hagen could take over at some point this year. Not really sure. Marlins are seven games behind, but we're 32 and 19. How do you have a 62.7 win percentage? And you're still that far out. It's because the Mets are absolutely OP in this game. They have completely built them to be a monster powerhouse. I mean, look at that. We're so far ahead of the Braves for that first wild card spot that it is almost ridiculous. A lot of people have won 30 games in the league. We would be leading just about every division in the American League right now if we were over there, but we're not. Jumbo Shrimp are a few games back, and the Blue Wahoos have started their season off really good, rivaling those Biloxi Shuckers. So there we sit, 32-19, and 19, seven games back, and the New York Mets, 7-3 and three in our last 10, and that includes a three-game losing streak. So not too bad, can't be upset about it. We'll have the draft in the next episode. It's going to be a little bit more abbreviated than it has been. Every season going on is a little more abbreviated just because we're trying to get through more seasons before the series comes to an end. We still haven't won a ring. When do you think that's going to happen? Let me know in the comments section below. Make sure you guys drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel for the love of franchise content because that's what we try to do here in all sports. Check out the description below for links to the Discord and my Twitch. Come see me uh, perform live on Twitch play some games, hang out. It's a great community. If you want to see more franchise, click right here.